By the spring of 1865, the Civil War was drawn to a close. The capital of the Confederacy, Richmond, Virginia, had been captured. The Confederate government officials, senators, congressmen, president, his cabinet, all made their departure before the Confederate Army had left the capital. They would go on to set up the Confederate government in Danville, Virginia, and then proceed south from there. In early April, the Union Army finally made their entrance into the Confederate capital of Richmond, Virginia, and following along with them was President Abraham Lincoln. Welcome to Have History Will Travel. I am your host, the Wilder Historian, and today I want to give you a first-hand account of Lincoln's entrance into that city. This account comes from Thomas Thatcher Graves, who served on the staff of General Godfrey Wetzel and witnessed Abraham Lincoln come into the city and explore its ruins. The next day after our entry into the city, on passing out from Clay Street from Jefferson Davis's house, I saw a crowd coming, headed by President Lincoln, who was walking with his usual long, careless stride and looking about with an interested air and taking in everything. Upon my saluting, he said, is it far to President Davis's house? I accompanied him to the house, which was occupied by General Wetzel as headquarters. The President had arrived about 9 o'clock at the landing called Rockets, upon Admiral Porter's flagship, the Malvern. And as soon as the boat was made fast, without ceremony, he walked on shore and started uptown. As soon as Admiral Porter was informed of it, he ordered a guard of Marines to follow as escort. At the Davis house, he was shown into the reception room with the remark that the housekeeper had said that the room was President Davis's office. As he seated himself, he remarked this must have been President Davis's chair and crossing his legs, he looked far off with a serious, dreamy expression. At length, he asked me if the housekeeper was in the house. Upon learning that she had left, he jumped up and said, with a boyish manner, Come, let's look at the house. I retailed all that the housekeeper had told me, and he seemed interested in everything. As we came down the staircase, General Wetzel came. In breathless haste, and at once President Lincoln's face lost its boyish expression as he realized that duty must be resumed. Soon afterward, Judge Campbell, General Anderson, Confederates, and others called and asked for an interview with the President. It was granted and took place in the parlor with closed doors. I accompanied President Lincoln and General Wetzel to Libby Prison in Castle Thunder and heard General Wetzel ask President Lincoln what he, General Wetzel, should do in regard to the conquered people. President Lincoln replied that he did not wish to give any orders on that subject, but as he expressed it, if I were in your place, I'd let them up easy. I hope you enjoyed this short account of Abraham Lincoln's entrance into the city of Richmond. I love Graves' description of Abraham Lincoln, almost in that boyish manner as he goes into the city that kind of eluded him throughout the entire war. It was the bane of his existence as President of the United States, and so to see him kind of almost relax in the White House of the Confederacy, it adds a whole new dimension to the Civil War. When you think of what went on to capture that one city alone, including the Siege of Petersburg, which I have videos on if you want to check those out, and then also the battles around Richmond, Virginia itself.